Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool arcade game pinball machine repair video for you this evening. Early evening. We got in this Star Trek pinball a while back. This is the original one. And, uh. <laughs> that's my Oscar's Wild Ride gumball machine talking in the background. Never mind him. We got in this pinball machine probably a year ago, and uh, we're just now getting around to working on it. And so I figured I would videotape some of the, or, uh, record some of the stuff that we do to get this thing back up and running. We're going to try to make this pretty nice. So, just to document it, the cabinet has a little wear, but is in pretty good shape. We're not going to make it look brand new, we're just going to make it look nice. There's a little wear around the buttons. Not sure what we're going to do uh, about that yet. If we're going to attempt to touch it up or just get it real clean. Uh, there's a little bit of wear on the back box. The blue blue will touch up pretty good. Yellow is a kind is kind of hard to touch up. The back glass is in pretty good shape. It's not perfect, but it's pretty nice. So I think we're good there. And then the play field. Whew. Playfield needs some help, people. First of all, it's filthy. Someone had already removed a whole bunch of the plastics, and I believe... Yeah, I believe they're inside. Or most of them, at least. Um, but it has heavy, heavy wear in the center there, so that's going to take some doing. They make an overlay that we're going to put on it that does the middle part with the text, but uh, we're still going to have to do some touch-up paint and stuff. So... Uh, We'll have to do that, and we'll tape that so we can see uh, how that turns out. A little bit of wear up here, too. Like I said, we're not going to get it perfect, but I think we can get it a lot nicer than this. So I figured we would do a good before video and then work our way through it. The main reason we do that is we're not trying to brag or anything. We're just trying to show people that if you run across something like this yourself, don't be scared. <laughs> you can fix it. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of work, and you just work through it systematically. So uh, um, it looks like it's it needs a ton of work, and it does. But it uh, you know if you go through it slowly, you can get it where it's a pretty presentable and well playing machine. So I'll open up the back box and uh, we'll see what's going on inside of there. I pop the back glass out and first thing you see is four of the displays are missing. Um, one display is still there for whatever reason. I guess they needed these ones but they didn't need that one. So let's see if we can get this sucker open. Everything looks good on the back of the uh, insert. All right, so, whoo. Hmm, even the transformer's gone, people. So there's a power transformer that goes here that's missing. There's a solenoid board that goes here that's missing. Um, but that's, that's not too big of a deal because uh, we've got plenty of those. And then the main MPU board is missing too, which isn't too big of a deal because we're going to put a new one in. Um, how annoying is it to hear a phone that nobody's answering? Whew. Think you'll get the hint? Alright. Um, the soundboard is uh, kind of specific to, a, to some of these early ones, so you kind of need this. This is kind of hard to find the right one. There's two different um, little prom chips. So you, you kind of need the right board and then you need the right prom as well. So I'm glad that's in there because that'd be kind of hard to find. But the solenoid board and the MPU board, we've got plenty of. And like I said, we're going to put a new MPU board in it anyway. So I need to find a transformer, a solenoid board, and an MPU board. So that's what's going on in the back box. Um, next, I'll take the glass off and we'll look inside of the bottom and see what's going on. Okay, we're down in the cabinet. And no transformer. Mm, that sucks. That's kind of a that's it's a hard one to get because you have to have it shipped and they're heavy. Um, 
all of the wiring that goes up into the top is back there, so that's good. The bottom of the play field looks pretty good, but there's a bunch of stuff missing. So like they've removed the coils for the flippers. Um, they removed, of course, all the drop targets, which isn't that big of a deal because we probably would have put new ones on it anyway. Um, uh, da, da, da. One of the springs is missing. <laughs> Just minor stuff like that. I think there, there's a coil, like a thing that goes here that's missing. Um, some of it may be in this box. Well, there's the bottom of it, so maybe. Looks like the this is a lot of the uh, plastics and things. So this is somebody's project that we've inherited. And uh, we'll see if we can do what they couldn't. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find that transformer. We've got to get a transformer for this thing. So I'm going to see if we've got one. Um, or if we can take one out of another machine or something, or if we can order one. So, uh, I'll be back when we're messing with that. So I looked in our parts room, and either I knew in the past that I needed this, or I ordered one for another game that I've forgotten about, but I have all of the Transformer stuff in my parts room. So this is the bracket that mounts in the back, and then this is the transformer which is actually the hard part to find because it's so heavy it's hard to ship so this is an E-122-125 Bally transformer which is the exact one that I need and some whoever shipped this to me cut the wires but left them all on where they go right and I also have a rectifier board this looks like it's really bad but really it's in pretty good shape um, and then this is the cage that goes around it in the back. So we're going to update this a little bit. Now you see they left all the wires attached where they go on this. And so this goes like that. And then this transformer whoop, mounts on there like so. And the transformer mounts right there. And uh, some of the wires go on the front on the top and then some of them I mean on the front on the bottom I think and then some of them wrap around to here and then once you mount it in the cabinet you put this around it like that to cover the transformer so I've got everything except whatever bolts and screws I need to put it all together with but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work over this rectifier board a little bit so uh, we'll get the soldering iron out and start messing with that a little bit I found another one of these mounting plates that still even had the screws in it and has this little heat sink thing that we need. So I think we're going to use that instead. So on the rectifier board, I didn't really have to do much to it. it was, it's actually in pretty good shape. It looks bad, but it's not. Um, one of the uh, connectors was burned up a little bit, so I replaced it. All of the fuse holders are fine and, and doing their thing. These four uh, uh, diodes are fine. They've replaced two of the bridge rectifiers. They used to be mounted on the back, so the ones in the middle. Two of them have been replaced, and all three of them are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. Now, you could do all kinds of updates to it if you want. You could even put a new rectifier board on it. They make this board brand new. You could replace all of the uh, bridge rectifiers with even bigger ones. You could put heat sinks on them. Um, just in, in, in my experience, usually none of that's necessary. Uh, the original stuff works pretty good. If you've got burnt up connectors, um, you should replace those and even more importantly replace the, the pins and the connectors that go in but we'll do that here shortly uh, so oh and the electrical tape on the back that's probably from the factory I think they put that on there just so that these wires wouldn't short out touching some of the pointy stuff on the back uh, you should reflow the solder on all the connectors which somebody had already done um, so we're going to mount that on there and then we're going to mount the transformer there and it's, it goes sideways which I didn't notice earlier and they it looked the reason that these wires are like this on the end is because they unsoldered them from whatever the previous transformer was so what I need to do is go back and one by one take this wire off and then solder the appropriate one where it goes so we're gonna do that now all right so I resoldered on one side 
luckily they left the wires long and uh, now I have to do the other side so you can see kind of how they go easy peasy people nothing to it here's my junk so I'm gonna do the other one and then I'm gonna mount it back on the board now I don't know if I made it clear usually you don't have to do this I just have to do this because I've got parts laying around I need to make a transformer out of so usually if you're working on one this will still be together and in one piece and you don't have to unsolder anything if you need to work on it you can just take it loose and work on the back but such is how we found it so we'll put it back together so we got all of our wires reattached how they're supposed to be and I guess I didn't make it clear earlier what this actually even is this is the uh, transformer that transforms the line voltage coming out of the wall which is 110 120 uh, into all the different voltages that the pinball machine needs or some of the voltages that the pinball machine needs I should say so it transforms the voltages so they come in on these bottom two wires here that's the 120 out of the wall and uh, they go through a bunch of windings inside of this this is all just a bunch of wire wrapped up and there's several different windings of wire in there so there's there may be one that doesn't even touch the other ones and all this stuff well uh, these little tabs up here depending on how these two are wired if you look they're on specific ones like it's on number one but it's also jumpered over to number three and then this one is on number is that a nine nine and it's jumpered over to number 11 so depending on how you wire it up it runs power through different wires and blah 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 and then the power that's on the other end of these is a different voltage right and then on this one it's got so much going on that there's some on this side too and these are all different voltages and you can see that they're all numbered on the paper so those voltages are all ac voltage now i'm no electrician or expert on electricity so take what I say with a grain of salt but they come out of the transformer as AC voltage and they go over to this which is called the rectifier board so the rectifier board rectifies so it turns uh, the AC power all the different AC voltages into DC voltages so the wires are soldered onto the back of the board at different places and they run through different things mainly these bridge rectifiers uh, when you run AC voltage into a bridge rectifier, you get DC voltage out of the other side. And depending on how much voltage you run in, you get a different voltage out the other side. So once it does that, it runs through fuses, and then it runs into these pins here. It's connected to the pins on the back. These pins have little connectors that go to different parts of the machine. So this basically provides all of your power to different parts of the machine. Um, and there's some little test connectors up here where you can measure the voltage to make sure to th that it's how it's supposed to be. Um, there's one voltage that goes through and doesn't go through a bridge rectifier uh, because it, it stays AC voltage. I think it's the uh, I think it's the illumination, like the lights. I think it's like six volts, and it's AC power instead of DC power. But basically, the reason we're starting with this is because this is the first place that the power runs. So we're just systematically work, working through the electricity going into the machine. So the plug plugs in. I'll show you that in the cabinet. And then it immediately runs into this. So we're getting this right first, which was missing. So without this, you can't do anything. The machine won't do anything when you plug it in. Uh, but we're going to put this back in. And then I'll show you how to check the voltages on it um, starting right from the beginning. So we put the thing back in there. We can't check the voltages yet because there's a couple fuses missing. And my brother took the fuses with him out to make a delivery. So uh, the next thing we're going to mess with is the connectors. So these connectors, you can see how that's turned brown. That's from heat. So these pins inside get all screwed up. So you need to replace these. Not all of them. We're probably going to replace all of them just because we keep, it's easy. We've got plenty of pins. Uh, but you need to connect, uh, replace at least the ones that are burnt. So the way you do it is you take a little screwdriver. And there's a little tab on the back of the pin that if you kind of bend it in, you can pull the, the wire right out. And then once you get the wire out, uh, you cut it off. I don't think I have the thing here with me. You cut it off and then you crimp a new one on. Let's see if I let's see if these will cut it. These things never quite work right. All 
There we go. So we cut the end off. Strip a little insulation off. Put it just so. Crimp a new end on. And slide it back into place. All right, and eventually you'll hear it kind of pop back into place. And there's a, you might not be able to see it from there, but there's a little tiny pin that kind of, a little ramp that sticks up. And once you slide it in, that goes behind this hole and so you can't pull it back out, which is why you have to bend it with the screwdriver to get it out. So we're gonna replace all of those. And then uh, we have another one that goes here. And then this is actually a large connector that's broken in half from the heat and the stress. So I'm going to see if we have a uh, a new housing on that. If it's one like this where it's just a little burnt, you don't have to replace the housing because it just it's just a piece of piece of plastic that holds the pins in place. Um, so we're going to work on that a little bit. Any other ones? Any other ones? And uh, we'll come back after that. This is the plug that we cut off. There was there was like two connectors missing, and there was a wire just hanging in there. And this is our new one. Look at that. Isn't that sexy? Wow, look at that. That's freaking amazing. Ah! So we're gonna put that where it goes on the connector here. And uh, then whenever I get my fuses back, we'll, uh, we'll check the voltages. Now, through the magic of YouTube time though, that's going to happen right now. All right, so we got the fuses in and we got our multimeter set up. So the way you check these is you put the ground on the bottom of this long resistor on the front here because that's just a ground spot. There's other places too, but that's where we always put it. You want to set your meter on DC and then there are little test points at the top, these little loops. So that says test point one, for instance, and it's giving us 6.4 volts. That's the, like the controlled illumination. So that's the voltage of like the little lights that it turns on. And you, so you want it to be five or a little above. So it's at six. And plus there's no load on anything. So none of the bulbs are in, none of the boards are in. So it's all the voltages are going to be a little bit high. So then we check the second one and it's at 187 volts. That's the power to the uh, it goes up here to the solenoid board and makes the power for the displays. And that's fine. I think usually that, uh, once you plug it in, that will actually go up. So that one's going to be up over 200 probably once we plug the boards in. I don't know why it does that. Power. It's weird. And so you go to this third one, and it's at 13.26. That's supposed to be 12 volts or a little bit higher. That's the uh, voltage that runs up to the solenoid board that's not here. Uh, that turns it into 5 volts to make uh, all of the uh, PCB's chips work. All right, so the fourth one we're going to skip because it's actually AC voltage. And then we go to the fifth one, and it's 46 volts DC, uh, which is the solenoid voltage. And that's about right. So we're going to put it on AC. And so this fourth test point, 7.24 volts. So that's the voltage uh, that makes the general illumination lights work. And as you can see, some of them are actually on. Some of them are still working after all this time. So... What we figured out is that it appears to me that all the voltages are working on the uh, transformer and the rectifier board, and so they're sending them up to this solenoid board, which is missing. So I'm going to go find one of those solenoid boards uh, that we can rebuild and pop in this sucker and get it doing its thing. Now, uh, on these machines, just so you know, you can buy a brand new rectifier board, brand new solenoid board. That's the lamp driver board. You can buy it brand new. You can buy the, buy the MPU brand new. You can buy the displays brand new. There's probably a sound card too, but I'm not sure. But uh, that may be the only one that you can't buy new. But we're going to use used on the solenoid board because the original ones are, are pretty reliable So once you rebuild them. So uh, I'm going to go find one, and then we'll start in on it. Voila! So we had this baby in a box in the back. And so uh, we... Uh, 
We tested all of the transistors, all of them are fine. You can see where it's been repaired three times in the past. See those little smoke trails? So three of these transistors got smoked at one point. Everything was fine. The only thing, we, this uh, capacitor should be changed, um, but we don't have any of them in right now, so we had to order it. But since we're kind of mocking it all up, we figured we'd leave it. Um, there's also a capacitor up here. I guess I should have left that guard off. There's a big long capacitor in the back there that has to do with the displays. So sometimes you have a problem with that too. And then uh, for a modification, there's all these little test points on here. And so there's a, a test point three, test point one, test point five, all this stuff. Um, it, it, there's a single, there's one wire that kind of goes to the back where, but anyway, uh, whenever you, if you tie test point three, to test point one, if you put a jumper wire between one and three, that kind of makes a connection a little bit better on the one. There's one wire that it only goes to one of those. So there's like just a little, a couple little minor mods like that that people do on these. You can find all that archived online. You can go to um, PinWiki or go to uh, penrepair.com they talk about it but so there's a couple little mods you do just to make the ground connections a little better and we did that but we have to wait for this cap um, so we're going to be taking the thing back out anyway we don't even have it screwed in right now um, so once once the 12 volts comes off the rectifier board up to the top here uh, on those two that you tie together test point one and test point three uh, if you check those with a multimeter, you should have 5 volts or a little bit more. And we do, so that part's fine. And uh, on your high voltage, there's two test points behind this plastic shield. One of them is the raw voltage coming in, which is like 230 volts, something like that. And then the other one is the um, 180 volts that it's supposed to be sent to the displays. So what a lot of people will do is if you, you can adjust it with this little knob that's under here and you you can adjust it down to where you're only getting like 170 or something like that the displays if the voltage is a little lower they're not quite as bright but you don't really notice it and the displays will last, the glass on the displays will last longer so we've got all that set up and now all of the voltages are correct so now basically this board with this is making five volts which it is sending out of one of these wires uh, over to this connector that goes on our MPU so we're, we've got a brand new MPU that we're going to put in. Now, before if you do put a new one in or a rebuilt one in or whatever, one thing you have to look at is this connector that we were just talking about tends to get uh, a lot of corrosion on it. So the original boards had a battery mounted on the bottom of them, and that battery will start leaking alkaline, and it will eat up the bottom of the board, and it'll eventually spread into these connectors. So if you're going to do this, you need to look at this connector and see if the pins inside of this connector look corroded. Also, the one that goes right here sometimes gets corroded. So sometimes you have to replace those pins. If you don't replace the pins, basically what will happen is the voltages uh, from the solenoid board won't be getting onto the MPU board clean. And so instead of having 5 volts on the board, you might have 4 volts or... Uh, whatever and so you'll get problems where it resets etc 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 and also if the pins are corroded you don't want to plug them into your brand new nice board because they could go back and start corroding the brand new board just from the corrosion on the pins so we've got our solenoid board in there the voltages seem fine so we're going to put the MPU board in next and see what we get okay so we ordered a brand new uh, board for this one because we don't have we've got the original one but it's um, all acidated up <laughs> All alkalined up. It's not really acid, I guess. It's alkaline. All alkalined up. So we bought a brand new one. These are about 200 bucks. They're real reliable. Uh, made by Alltech Systems. You can get them anywhere. You can get pinball stuff. The ultimate MPU board. And so basically, you have to. It comes with this uh, manual that tells you how to set it up to be whatever game it is. So there's a little switch down here on the bottom. Game select switch. And depending on how you set that, it plays whatever rules um, for a valley or a stern that that game needs. And then if you put the first switch up, it makes it free play on the valley games. So we have done that. 
Um, and then once you do that, you have to set up these switches here. These are the dip switches like on the original MPU, which is all of the game options. So if you look in the manual, it tells you all of the uh, switch options. Now if you've got the original board, you can just set all those like it is in the original board. And then sometimes in the actual cabinet, it's still got the paperwork inside the back box that tells you what all the switches do. So once you get that all set up, you can mount it in the cabinets. We're going to do that next. And by the way, we got our uh, little capacitor in that we were waiting for. So we're all good to go now. But we're going to pop this in and see what we get. So we're all mounted up. I didn't have to repin this connector because it still looked fine. It didn't look like any of the uh, corrosion had ever got over to it. So I suppose we're good. Um, or any of the other connectors. Sometimes this one will be real bad too. You just look at the pins in the thing and see if they look really bad. If they look bad, replace them. If they don't, do like I did. Leave them original. You know, we're trying to be all original here. So we're going to turn it on and there is a light over here. On the regular MPU there's a LED, but on this one it has some LEDs right here. If it'll focus. MPU self-test over voltage and the plus five. So the bottom one should be on and the top one should blink seven, like a quick flash and then seven more. And then uh, if everything's all right, it should boot up. So the bottom one's on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So on this one, a quick flash wasn't really all like a quick flash, it was a regular flash. And then it plays the little tune and now it's doing its thing. And uh, if you'll remember, we only have one <laughs> display in it. And so it's showing you the last score and then the high score, which is the same because nobody's ever played it. And then on the play field that we haven't really done yet, of course, you're getting all kinds of lights twinkling and doing their thing. So basically, the game is up and running. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, get some more displays working because we're a little short. But it appears that we've got everything in the back box working. Now, sometimes if you've got a soundboard, you have to do some work on it, but this one's still working good, so we're not really going to mess with it. But sometimes you need to replace the caps on it. Um, and it sounded like it was playing the, the little tune. I don't know if there might be something missing or whatever, but once we get the game up and playing, we can check that again. So we might have to come back in and um, do the uh, do something on the soundboard. But it sounds like it's working right now. Oh, and also the uh, we haven't done the the uh, light board. So this board, of course, runs all the lights. So we can't really mess with it yet because the play field is still in shambles. So we don't know if um, all the lights are working or if there's a problem on that board. At the very least, we'll take it off and resolder the connections on the back of the connectors. But we're up and running, so we'll uh, we'll grab some displays and test out some of them. All right, so we pulled out a bunch of displays that we had in a box that somebody had given us and started looking through them. And some of them just there's no way we can use, like this one. So that's what happens when the voltage is too high. It burns the display. And on the, on the ballys, a lot of times whenever the, uh, the high voltage section goes bad, all it does is it makes the high voltage spike. So it does stuff like that. And so this one, similar thing going on. Now on this one, see how the two right ones are a different color? And then the, the second and the third one are? That's because it was in the ball and credit display because it only uses four of the things. So this one here was never turned on and the fourth one was never turned on. But you can't really put that in a nice game like Star Trek. That won't work, people. And then we've got this one, which isn't quite as bad. It might actually light up decent. But you can see how it's discolored and stuff, so some of the digits probably won't be as bright. And then we've got this one, which is all right. But you see how the same thing's going on. The fifth and the sixth one and the second and the third one are a different color. So it was probably also a ball and display one. But what you could do is put that back in the ball and the ball and... Uh, uh, what is it? Ball and credit. Ball and credit display. You can put that back in it and it'd probably look alright, but there's a little bit of a burn mark on that second one. See it? The little dot. So that might not light up that great either. Then we've got this one, 
which that last one looks a little a little weird but it may be usable we've got this one which is actually from a stern but they work just the same and it's in pretty good shape so it looks good then we've got this one which looks fine but if you look real close at that chip see how there's a bump on the top of the chip that's because the chip exploded so that, <laughs> that chip definitely needs replaced and then this one looks pretty good all over everything looks good it looks pretty clean actually so what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these that look like they might be usable and just pop them in there and see if uh, they can come up and kind of halfway work. If they halfway work, then we'll rebuild them and, and make them more reliable. Okay, so we popped in some of those random displays just so you can see some of the stuff that they do. Uh, if you look at this one, you can see how that digit number two part of it's missing because it's burnt. If you look at this one, you can see that we've got some random stuff popping up on number four this one looks pretty good so far this one down here has got all kinds of weird stuff going on and this one looks pretty good but that six digits a little burnt all right so we're gonna put it in the test and watch it do its crazy stuff all right so this one digit two is missing the other ones are kind of ghosting this first one looks pretty good, but you got something going on there underneath the second digit. This one, digit number four, is clearly just locked on, which is messing up all the other ones. This one's all right, except that last digit doesn't look all that great. And this one is pretty good, except that one segment is burnt so bad that it doesn't even show up sometimes. So basically we've got a bunch of screwed up display so we're going to work through them a little bit and see if we can figure out uh, how many we have that are even savable and then we'll try to scrounge up some other ones okay so I pulled one of them back out this is the one that the fourth digit was kind of locked on so I figured I'd just show you like an overview of them and how you can fix any of them um, just kind of what you need to look at so first you need to inspect the glass and see if there's any like really bad burn spots so you know we had those ones that had the little dots on it. Basically if the glass is burned, you can't, there's nothing you can do about it. You can put a new glass on it, but that costs as much as buying like an LED one. So you might as well just buy a brand new LED one and then you don't have a problem. So you, you can, if you want it all original, you can buy a replacement glass, but literally they're like 50 bucks now. And it's a big pain in the butt to replace. You have to uh, resolder all these pins. Um, that's if it's got like a, a physical thing where you can see that something's uh, bad. Sometimes too you'll see that they're cracked. Like if you look at the back you can see where the uh, the pins go inside of it. It'll be, the glass will be cracked. Um, again useless if it's like that. Uh, sometimes too you'll have one and it'll it'll look fine but whenever you put it in you'll see like little sparks or something going on in places. I think one of those was actually doing it. Usually that means the, the glass has a leak in it or it's about to go out. Or there's some kind of short inside. Same thing. You can't fix it. Basically that's like a sealed... Uh, 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 there's two pieces of glass stuck together and they're kind of glued together. There's, there's no way to seal it once it... I mean, no, no, no way to fix it once it gets a crack in it. So the... Um, connectors here are a big source of problems so if you've got some you need to resolder all the pins on the bottom someone has done these at one point um, a lot of times you'll see like a big like a circle around one of the pins uh, it's a cold solder joint so it's a, the wire that's connected to the pin isn't actually connecting to the board because of that circle around the uh, the pin so this one had the fourth digit was much brighter than the other digits. That's because the fourth digit was basically locked on. So if you if you get one and a digit's locked on, what you need to look at is your signal comes in through here, through here, and then it goes through 
R1, R3, R5, um, R7, R9, and R11 on these six digit ones. So these, these three resistors here and these three resistors here, if they, uh, they will burn up. So they'll go from 100 ohm, I think it's 100 ohm. Let me check it real quick. Well, I, don't I don't see a thing. It's either 100 ohm or 100K, you'll have to check. But um, the, uh, these will, I think, I think it's 100 ohm, but these will burn up and go higher than that. If they do, you'll lose one of the digits. So if you get, if you get one that one of the digits is missing, check those six resistors. And they correspond, um, I believe it's from left to right from the back. Anyway, they correspond with the six digits, of course. And then the signal to turn on the the uh, digits comes from comes through these six transistors here. And those are let me see if they're if I can read it. I'm not close enough to read it. Anyway, you can read it. It's on there. So these six transistors, this is the uh, rightmost digit. I guess you could call the ones digit, tens digit, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So they go through here, and then they go up to the, the uh, right behind the window, and then go through another six transistors. So again, this is this digit, 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 and this is this digit. So if you just general electronic stuff, if you're if you're not aware, anything that is a uh, like a passive device, like a resistor, usually you don't have too much trouble with. Now I just mentioned that these burn up, but uh, if you're looking for a problem like this where the thing's on too bright or whatever, usually it's not going to be something passive. It's going to be something that has action to it. So it's like a transistor. And then the other, only other thing really on the board that's like that is this chip. This chip does the uh, segments. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you, since we've got the fourth digit screwed up, it's going to be either this transistor here or it's going to be that transistor there. It's like 95% chance it's either that or that and you can test them with a multimeter whenever you've got something like this where all six of these transistors are the same you can use a multimeter and check between the legs with, with like your diode test which is the same as a transistor test and check it with this one and see if they're the same they should be fairly similar one of these is going to be shorted on um, in some way that the other ones aren't shorted on if it's not that one then it'll be this one instead of those. Now if you get a problem with a segment, so if you get a segment completely missing, they don't run through the same type of resistor that burns up like the uh, digits do. They run through these seven transistors and each one corresponds to a different segment on the actual number. So you've got the bottom one that's one, you've got the middle one that's two, you've got the top one that's three, you've got the top left one is four, the one below it's five, six, seven. So you've got seven possible segments. So if you have a segment, now whenever you get a whenever you get a segment problem, it'll you'll see it on all of them. So like all seven of them will have a segment missing. And you'll see weird stuff like uh, it's supposed to have like all um, you know, of course you can see it the best in an 8 because all the segments light up. It's supposed to have all 8's but the middle segment will be missing on all of them so it says 0 instead or something like that. If, it's, if you see that, your problem is probably the transistor related to it. Now if you get just gibberish where everything's crazy or only a few of the segments are missing, if you look close you might be able to see a, like a break in the glass or something which means your glass is screwed up and you need to throw it away. Or if it's uh, gibberish where it just looks like instead of having all eights, it's got four, eight, three, five, two, four, or something just weird, then it's probably this segment decoder here. So it gets a, it gets several signals and then tells these transistors what to do as it as it uh, um, what do they call it strobes through. So if you're getting all kinds of gibberish, you're probably the, uh, this decoder chip. If one segment is missing on every digit 
it's going to be one of those seven transistors. If one digit is missing, it's probably one of those six resistors. And if one digit is locked on uh, really brightly, it's probably one of these six, the, the corresponding transistor back here or up there. Now, if your digit is missing and it's not the resistor, it could also be one of the transistors. So the six resistors and then these, it, the corresponding transistor back here and the corresponding transistor up there make it work. It also uses, you know, some resistors and stuff, but usually you don't have any problem with any of those, at least in this design. If, if nothing's working, like it's all screwed up, it may be this diode here, but not very often, or it may be this cap, but not very often. So that's kind of what you're looking at. You've also got test points here. Um, a ground test point, a plus five test point, and then this one is the high voltage test point. So on these, I was talking about it earlier, the high voltage, uh, can uh, it can be up to like 240 volts or something like that, just if the uh, high voltage section of the solenoid board goes bad, a lot of times it'll short to where it's just on full bore. But uh, if it's properly working, you should be able to adjust it down with that little potentiometer on the, on the uh, solenoid driver board that we were looking at in the high voltage section. And so on this machine, it's at 180. So you can sometimes put it down to even like 170. The lower you put it, the longer the displays will last. But the problem is if you go to 170, you might get problems where stuff's flickering a little bit and stuff. So we leave it a little bit high. But it's not really high. I think originally it was designed to be ran at like 190. But we leave, a lot of people say set it at 170, but we've had problems with that in the past. So we put it on like 180, which is a little high for some people. But I think uh, factory, they were supposed to be at 190 or something like that. So that's that. So we're going to work this one and see if we can get that fourth digit to not be so bright. Um, and then work through a few of the other ones. And uh, we'll shoot a little video once we get them all in and doing their thing. All right, folks. So we worked through all the displays and got several of them to work. And up in the machine, we've got one here that we're going to replace with another one just because of that annoying dot. Um, but basically, we've walked through all the electronic stuff. We can't play it yet because we have to fix the, the uh, play field. We've got everything stripped off of it. and We have to do a lot of artwork. Uh, but I think we'll end the video here until next time. We'll do another video on repairing that play field and getting it up and running. Uh, but that'll be part two of the series. We're bringing this damn Star Trek back, people. So we'll uh, we'll see you on the next one. Give us a thumbs up for taking the, the trouble to uh, film all this for you. And leave us a comment below. Tell us what you think. And uh, if you have any, uh, any uh, tips that we didn't go over here, go ahead and leave them below for, the, for other people. We're trying to help people save these things. There's only so many of them left, right? So we'll see you next week on installment two where we'll be doing a lot of cosmetic stuff. So if you like that, make sure and stay tuned. But hit the subscribe button, leave us a comment below. Make sure to give us a thumbs up because that spreads us around YouTube and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and we'll see you on the next video.